Welcome back everyone to our session on Unix programming. In this session, we will look into the various System5 IPC methods. The System5 IPC is the name given to the three IPC mechanisms that are widely available in Unix operating system. They are message queues, semaphore and shared memory. So we will be looking each one of these IPC methods in detail in the upcoming videos. For today's session, we will be looking into the common uh, similarities or common features among all these three. First, let us see the concept of identifiers and keys. So, each IPC structure, when I talk about each IPC structure, I am talking about the message queues, uh, semaphores and shared memory. Okay. So, each of these IPC structure in the kernel is referred to a non-negative integer called as identifier. So, each of these structures are uh, known with the integer value and it is called as identifier. And the identifier is uh, the internal name for an IPC object. Okay, This is uh, for the reference of a kernel. But the cooperating process need to, need to have an external naming scheme to be able to meet using the same IPC object. right? So, since it is uh, the internal name what we, what we have for, that is for used by the kernel, the cooperating process, the process uh, that, in, that are involved in inter-process communication need to have some external naming schemes to be able to meet using the same IPC object. For this purpose, an IPC object is associated with the key okay, that act as an external name. So, somehow I need to obtain uh, the key through which uh, multiple process that uh, that are involved in communication can meet at a point okay and the data type of this key is a primitive data structure key underscore t which is often defined as a long integer in the header uh, system types dot h okay so this is nothing but a long integer but uh, uh, we however we we are not supposed to use int or long directly so the rather we make use of key underscore t that is because the length of the key is system independent or rather system dependent sorry the key the length of the key is system dependent so i cannot make use of the key type as long or integer directly okay rather it has to be defined as key underscore t and this key is converted into the identifier by the kernel okay so this is about identifiers and keys now let us consider a client and server communication scenario using the same ipc structure there are various ways of uh, doing this where the client and server agree upon at the same IPC structure and uh, let us discuss the first way. So, in this way, in this case, the server can create a new IPC structure by specifying a key of the type IPC private. Okay? So, uh, IPC private in the sense a private key, unique private key will be generated and as the name suggests uh, this uh, this is unique right so which will not be known to the outside processes and this key is returned as an identifier and it is stored somewhere in a file for the client to obtain and the of course the path name to the uh, file should be known to the client okay so this is how the server can uh, share a unique key to the client for uh, communication but uh, by storing it in a, a file okay but the disadvantage of this technique is the file system operations are required uh, it is required for the server to write the integer identifier value to a file and then for the clients to retrieve this identifier later so uh, file system operation in the sense of opening a file creating a file opening a file writing a file reading a file closing a file so all these operations are required isn't it so, this is one of the disadvantage of the using this particular technique. The IPC private key is also used in parent-child relationship. The parent creates a new IPC structure by specifying the IPC private. So, unique key is generated here and this key is converted to an identifier and uh, it is then made to made available to the child after fork. Okay? So, a parent, yes. So, parent 
will be able to obtain a unique key which is converted to, into an ID and after fork system call automatically the child will also receive this ID right and uh, the child is then um, made to pass this identifier to a new program as an argument to exec function. So using the exec function, so whatever this uh, ID that is generated from the key is made to pass to a new program. So this is how uh, IPC private key is also used in parent child relationship. Now let us see the second method. Let us understand how exactly FTOK function works. So as previously said, this function is used to generate the key. As you can see, the return type of FTOK function is a key type, right? And uh, it returns minus one on error. And it takes two arguments, path, a character path and an ID, okay, which is normally written uh, uh, integer ID, but normally it is written in terms of a character, which is converted into a, an integer value. For example, if I pass A as an ID, then uh, its equivalent ASCII value, that is 61, will be sent to FTOK function as an argument, as a second argument. Okay, and uh, the first argument is the uh, path. Okay, and based on these two arguments, uh, the FTOK function converts this into a key. Okay, and this key is provided to the calling function, normally to the uh, parent process. Okay, which can be which can be sent to the child process by using the fork system call, and uh, the child can again. Uh, pass this into the exec system call and uh, the new program will be able to obtain this key value. Okay? So this is how the FTOK function will generate the key. Now let us see the third appro second approach in client and server communication using the same IPC structure. So the other technique what we can do is the client and server can agree on a key by defining the key in a common header okay and the server then creates a new ipc structure by specifying this key that is agreed upon by both client and server and stored in this header but the problem with this approach is that it's possible for the key to be already associated with an existing ipc structure so in that case the server has to handle the error by deleting the existing ipc structure and try to uh, try to create it again okay so this is the second approach coming to the last one third approach the client and server can agree on a path name and project id and this has to be given uh, to the F ftok function to convert these uh, two values into a key okay so the path name and project id should be some should be the two arguments that need to be agreed upon by both the client and the server and this has to be passed as an argument to ftok function which is uh, used for creating generating a key okay and using the key obtained then we can uh, follow the previous approach that is uh, sharing the key in a common header so these are the uh, yeah this is the third approach so these are the various uh, ways where a client and server can communicate by using the same IPC structure now uh, let us look into the FTOK function in in detail let us see the structure of FTOK function permission structure the system 5 IPC associates an IPC underscore perm structure with each of the IPC mechanisms. Okay, So when I talk about each IPC structure, I am talking about message queues, shared memory and semaphores. So each of these structure has an associated, say, associated IPC permission structure. Uh, as the name suggests, uh, this structure defines the permission and ownership. And it has the following members. It has UID which is owner's effective ID, GID, owner's effective group ID, uh, CUID, creator's effective user ID, and CGID, which is creator's effective group ID. And also uh, access modes, right, which is uh, which is specified as mode. And it, it can have the following values. See, the values in the mode field are uh, very similar to what we have seen in uh, with respect to uh, files. But... Uh, there is nothing corresponding to the execute permission for any of the IPC structures. And also, 
मेसेज क्यू एंड शेड मेमोरी यूज द टर्म रीड एंड राइट वेर एज सेमोर्स यूज द वर्ड आल्टर एज यू कैन सी दल्टर इज रिटर्न विद इन द ब्रैकेट दैट इज यूज बै द सेमोर्स ओके एंड एंड द बिट वैल्यू इज ऑलो रेप्रजेंटेड हियर जीरो फोर डबल जीरो इज फॉर यूजर रीड एंड यूजर राइट इट इज जीरो टू डबल जीरो ग्रूप रीड इट इज जीरो जीरो फोर जीरो एंड ग्रूप राइट इट इज जीरो जीरो टू जीरो एंड अदर्स इट इज जीरो 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 फोर एंड अदर राइट इट इज जीरो 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 टू सो दिस इज अबाउट द परमिशन स्ट्रक्चर एसोसिएटेड विद ईच ऑफ द आई पी सी स्ट्रक्चर कॉन्फिगरेशन लिमिट सी ऑल दीज थ्री फॉर्म ऑफ सिस्टम फाइव आई पी सी हैव एन बिल्ट इन लिमिट्स दैट वी मे एनकाउंटर सो वैन आई टॉक अबाउट लिमिट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द रिस्ट्रिक्शंस विद रेस्पेक्ट टू द अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम द प्रोसेस कैन कम्युनिकेट विद ईच अदर द अमाउंट ऑफ डेटा दैट इट कैन रीड एंड राइट सो ऑल दिस थिंग्स राइट एंड मोस्ट ऑफ दिस लिमिट्स कैन बी चेंज बाई री कॉन्फिगरेशन द कर्नल ओके नाउ लेट एस सी द एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवांटेजेस ऑफ आई पी सी सिस्टम फाइव आई पी सी मैकेजम नाउ लेट एस डिस्कस अबाउट द एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवांटेजेस ऑफ सिस्टम फाइव आई पी सी मैकेजम द फंडामेंटल प्रॉब्लम इज द आई पी सी स्ट्रक्चर आर सिस्टम वाइड एंड इट डज नॉट हैव अ रेफरेंस काउंट एंड दिस विल क्रिएट अ प्रॉब्लम फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू क्रिएट अ मेसेज क्यू प्लेस सम मेसेज ऑन द क्यू एंड देन टर्मिनेट द मेसेज क्यू एंड इट्स कंटेंट्स आर नॉट डिलीटेड सो दे विल रिमेन इन द सिस्टम until specifically read or deleted by some process that calls message receive which we will be looking in the upcoming video or uh, message control so until these two functions are called the message will remain in the queue right and the other way is uh, the system being rebooted so if you compare this with the pipe and uh, fifo then this problem is not present because a uh, pipe will be removed completely when the last process uh, to reference it reference it terminates so as as the process uh, terminates the pipe also gets terminated uh, with the fifo the name stays in the file system until explicitly removed but any data left in the fifo is removed when the last process to reference the fifo terminates right The another problem with the system file IPC is that the IPC structures are not known by their names in the file system. So if that is the case, then we can't access them or modify their property with the functions, right? And it is not possible to view the objects, IPC objects, with an ls command. We can't remove them with by using the rm command, and we can't change their permissions with the ch mode command. So these are the problems are as that are associated with. Uh, system 5 ipc structure and the last one the ipc uh, system 5 ipc it don't make use of file descriptors so we can't use the multiplexed io functions such as select and pool with them and this makes it harder to use more than one of these ipc structure at a time or to use any of these ipc structure with the file or uh, device input output file for example we can't have a server wait for a message to be placed on one or one of the two message queues without some form of a busy wait loop of course there are few advantages for example the message queues that are uh, very reliable and it is flow controlled record oriented and can be processed in an order other than first in first out which is uh, uh, which is the only way how we can process when it comes to pipe and fifo right so th th there is an advantage along with the disadvantages of using the system 5 ipc mechanisms